So up to this point in the course, where we're at right now is we've talked about all the very, very basics of programming. You know how to talk to the user through the form of output. You know how to store data through the form of variables. And you know how to get input from the user. Um, using these tools, you can do quite a bit, but it still limits your form of interaction. It makes things very tedious. You have to repeat a lot of code if you want to make anything complex. And our our programs still flow the same way they always flow. They flow from top to bottom. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to cause a branch. We are going to say, well, partway through this flow, go over to this little mystery box here and do something else. And when you're all done, come right back to where we left and then continue on with the program. Now what this mystery box is, is really whatever we want it to be. It's going to be some block of code that does something, but hopefully it's something that's pretty useful to whatever program we're actually writing. So now what we're going to do, I want to give you a little analogy for a second. Imagine a high school, and in that high school, that high school is a principal, of course. And at the end of the year, he's got a whole bunch of graduates. And these graduates need diplomas, and all these diplomas need this principal's signature. So say, for example, there's 400 students graduating from this school. That's a lot of signatures. And that principal, whether he or she um, wants to or not, does have to sign those diplomas. So is there a way to simplify the process? Well, yeah, of course there is. There's something called a stamp. You've all heard of stamps before. You put it in some ink and you stamp it on the page and you get a product of some type of simile or similar uh, image or something like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a signature stamp. Now a signature stamp is a duplicate of somebody's handwritten signature. Now if the principal had this tool, all the principal would have to do is hand that stamp off to somebody who's got time to do it. It could be himself or it could be somebody else completely, like the secretary or vice principal or someone else, some other form of administration in school. And all they'd need to do is stamp, 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 repeat the process. The principal doesn't even need to be involved anymore. He was involved in creating the stamp, but that's it. Now it's out of his hands. Now it's up to somebody else to actually use that stamp. Well, that analogy is something that we're going to do today. We're going to build a quote unquote stamp so that somebody, including ourselves, could use it later on and use it as many times as we want, just like a stamp. A stamp can be used by me, you, or anybody, and it can be used as many times as we have ink. That's our goal for today. So in order to achieve that goal, we're going to talk about something called a subprogram. Let me just get rid of all this. Something called a subprogram. Now, if you just look at the term, you should have a good idea of what it actually means. We know what a program is. A program is just a set of actions to achieve a goal. Ordered actions, that is. Well, if you know what the keyword sub means here, sub just means like a smaller version. So you might have a sub menu, for example, which is a smaller menu within the bigger menu. So what a sub program is, we define it as a reusable block of code, more so we're actually going to say a reusable mini program within the program. that performs a single task. That last part is pretty important. We don't want it doing too much because then if something goes wrong that means we have to deal with all the pieces not just one little thing and it's very easy to fix or replace if it's just dealing with one piece. So say for example you had a computer with a built-in where everything was built right into the monitor. Uh, a lot of Apple a lot of Apple computers do this. If you had a problem with the screen, that means you'd have to send the whole unit in. You wouldn't be able to do anything with it. It'd be out of your hands. However, if you had a regular desktop and you had a problem with the screen, you'd probably have another screen kicking around somewhere while you get that first one fixed so you could replace it with something else. It's a simple change. So these sub-programs, or these mini-programs within the programs, they allow us to create chunks. There are these blocks of code that will do stuff for us that we can reuse and reuse just like the stamp did for the principal. You've already seen some of these in the past. Things like math.pow. The pow is the subprogram. What it's doing is it's calculating the power of a base to an exponent. 
just we also have other ones, things like console.readline. It's reading text from the user. It performs a single task, just like PAL performs a single task. It does nothing else, just that one job. Did we write that code? No, we didn't. Somebody else wrote it for us. We don't have to worry about it. All we have to know is that the stamp works, and we can use that stamp as many times as we want. We've, all, we've built programs now that use multiple read lines. It still works no matter how many times we use it. That's why we say it's reusable. If it weren't reusable, there wouldn't be much point to actually doing it. So why do we actually need these subprograms? Well, there's two reasons that we need subprograms. Number one, as we mentioned, is reusability. Reusability. Our programs are going to start to get pretty large soon. And rather than copy and pasting large chunks of code to repeat processes, because remember, computers are all about automating things, and the way you automate things is you create repetition. Do and do and do and do and do. We are always doing that same thing. Well, if we have subprograms, we could take a chunk of code, and let's say it's 10 lines of code, that performs a task. And maybe that task is like um, calculating the, the volume of a, of a cylinder for some reason. And rather than write all the lines of code to do that and repeat the process every time the user wants to calculate the volume of a different cylinder, all we have to do is create a subprogram. And that subprogram can then be used over and over and over again. It makes life a lot easier. The second reason is something called readability, something we've talked about before. If you remember what readability really means, it's how fast, oops, readability, um, it's how easy a program is to understand at a glance. And that's that at a glance part is what's important. So if somebody can quickly look at the program and understand what's going on. Well, the way subprograms help readability is that they allow us to take large or small chunks of code that's complicated and just replace them with a name that's descriptive. So instead of the few lines of code it is to calculate that volume of a cylinder, we might replace it with a name for the subprogram called like calculate cylinder. It's very simple, it's very precise. There's no questions about what that does. Now if we have the multiple lines of code, we have to look at it and analyze, okay, well I see that we have a formula here, and what does that formula do? Oh, pi r squared times h, that's the volume of a cylinder. Okay, I know what that means. So the readability makes a, the, the use of the named Subprograms gives us that readability, it allows us to simplify the code. So that's the basics of what a subprogram is, why we would use it. In the next few modules, we're going to discuss how we're actually going to use it and what it, and where we can actually make good use of it.